Bob, you want to get Marcus and me to put on his... Like, you can start with Marcus and then peel off and then go on the rear. You want to go up and do that last bit? Yeah, I'll do the, I'll I'll do the last bit. I'll do everything before that pitch. I'll get you before the pitch and then him after the pitch. Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, Bob and I are here today to talk about a pretty exciting new ski. I love exciting new skis. Yeah, exciting new stuff is exciting and yeah. new. <laughs> um, yeah, what, when I was writing the article before we started filming, I was kind of thinking to myself, like, it's, it's somewhat rare to get a ski that, like, really feels innovative. Right. Like, you know, you know especially... With trends in the ski industry, you get subtle differences among brands, which we talk about a lot. Like when we have our comparison videos, like right. that's a good example. Like there are differences among those skis, but it's rare that something like really feels like a new thing. Yeah. Um, you know, like when we got like parabolic side cut, or when we got rocker, those were right. those marked major changes. Not really that this ski has anything that's like new on its own. But I feel like the combination of all of its elements is something that we don't really ever see. No, and it's always nice to talk about a ski like this and its place in the industry as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is the Black Crow's Miris Core. Uh, um, gosh, it was a while ago that we talked about the Black Crow's Serpo. That's the other new ski from Black Crow's for mm -hmm. 2022. Uh, I think we kind of teased this ski when we did that review. Um, I would say the Serpo is kind of more straightforward in its design yeah. and, and overall performance, where this is just a fundamentally different ski. Yeah. Super, super fun to ski. Yeah, about as far away from mainstream as you're going to find. Yeah. Um, so here it is. Let's kind of talk about construction first, because I think construction's relatively straightforward in the grand scheme of things, and where it really starts to get interesting is in shape um, and performance and application and that kind of stuff. So. For construction, we get a poplar wood core, we get fiberglass, nothing crazy there. Yeah. Um, there's a partial tightenal sheet. They're not, sometimes Black Crows does a really good job of listing like the exact length dimensions of that sheet of metal. They do for other skis, but they didn't in this ski. They just said single sheet of metal in the middle of the ski. So my best guess would be the middle third. About the middle third. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of what they do with their metal sheets is they'll they yeah. take the length of the ski and say, well, this is how long how long the metal sheet goes in this ski here. Yeah, so you get a little bit of metal underfoot, um, gives it a little bit stronger of a feel when you're in, like, you know, deep in a, a carved yeah. trench, so to speak. Um, they call it partial cap construction, which... I don't see it. Yeah. You see a full sidewall. It's, it's tough for me to wrap my head around partial cap construction in this ski, I will say, and that's how I described it in the written article too, is there's like a, maybe a millimeter or two of kind of the top sheet yeah. curving over the the side of the ski. But you do get full length vertical sidewalls. It's not like it tapers into cap construction right. in the tip or anything like that. Um, so I said shape is where things get pretty darn interesting. Um, and this ski is combining kind of two different styles of skis so on one hand it's a twin tip um, and it's actually a fairly symmetrical twin tip the mount point is 3.5 centimeters back i can't remember how exactly how far off the tips and tails are in width but not very far i think they're 10 maybe a little less i think a little less than 10 um, so pretty darn symmetrical in its side cut shape and its rocker profile and it has a 13 meter turn radius. Yep. 
that's like, that's short. When's the last time you saw a twin tip with a 13 meter turn radius? Uh, I can't think of ever. I don't think I've ever seen a ski like that. I can't remember ever skiing something like that. And we also get this kind of fish or, or swallow tail cut in the tail. Yeah. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, super, super short turn radius, twin tip construction, little metal underfoot. Uh, the tips and tails, <clears throat> you get a little bit of softer flex up in the tips and tails. But I, I do think the whole ski is, is pretty strong. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of has to be because of how much rocker it has in the tips and tails. Uh, but I skied it more than you did, Bob, but I'm interested in your thoughts about this ski and, and the general concept of a ski like this. Yeah, I was thinking about it before we started filming and, you know, not to call out more mainstream brands, but could you ever picture Nordica or Vocal no. coming out with a ski like this? No. You know, we see it from Black Crows. It'd be too much risk. Right. You know, we see it from Line with the Blade, which we can talk about a little later with the comparison, but, and then a company like Black Crows, which doesn't adhere to a certain, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> a, the best a, a word for it. A certain path in right. terms of their ski construction. So, you know, this follows a totally different philosophy, uh, one that is all about having fun on the hill, and that's just something that I don't think we can emphasize enough as an important aspect of ski construction. Yeah. And one of like my favorite things about Black Crows and some of these smaller lines that are able to take these risks. Um, <clears throat> and like I don't even think it's a risk for them. You know, it's just right. this is just what we do. This is what we put out there, and uh, and people should have fun on it. Um, but yeah, I mean the combination of that short turn radius. I mean it's an eighty-seven millimeter twin tip carving ski. Yep. Like if you want to label it, you can label it as that. But you don't really have to say what it is. You really just have to go click in and enjoy it and carve some turns. Um, but just from an optical standpoint, it looks different than anything out there. Uh, you know, you need that ex you need that extra bit of torsional stiffness to get this thing up on edge to access that turn radius. That's kind of where it's nice to have the softer flex and the shovels and the tails uh, and then the little swallow tail as well really allows for that ski to articulate and you need that articulation uh, in order to get the ski on that 13 meter radius so there is a little wiggle here um, you know we can also bring the line sakana into the fold yeah. as a shorter turning radius ski with a swallow tail the sakana is a lot stiffer uh, in that in that portion of the ski, they actually have me more metal in there uh, than this. Um, so that kind of, I would say the Sakana is a little bit more business-like in that respect. I would agree 100%. And this is more playful. Um, but just overall, from, you know, not even from a performance standpoint, but from a philosophical standpoint and, you know, what skiing should be, like, this is just, I love seeing stuff like this come come through here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's really cool. You know, they're, they're basically like going back to the drawing board and saying like, what's fun about skiing? Right. And you can do a lot of fun stuff on these skis. Yeah. Um, so camber underfoot, you know, 13 meter turn radius, little metal under there, poplar wood core, all those things add up to a ski that should be able to carve some pretty nice yep. turns, and it really can. Um, it doesn't feel quite as short as a slalom ski. And I think part of that is the tail, how you were just yeah. talking, the tail can articulate a little bit. So you don't get the same like bite and like push out of the yeah. tail when you're linking carving turns. But if you keep your weight centered, it carves some really nice turns, very round turns. You don't have to like give it a ton of power. It kind of just like hooks up and, and goes. Yeah. Um, what I found was really cool about it is you can transition from really quick carving turns and then just immediately let it slide and slip out. Yeah. Which for me, I was doing mostly to get to switch and then back from switch. It was maybe the easiest ski I've ever been on for going from forward to switch without your skis leaving the ground. Yeah. It just like lightning quick, it just pivoted like immediately. Yeah. So it's super cool and super playful. Um, high wiggle factor. Yeah, I would, yeah, five out of five for wiggle fast. I can't remember yeah. what the ski was where we <laughs> used that term last, but certainly a high wiggle factor on these skis. Really, really fun to use to just kind of play on the mm -hmm. side of the trail. Um, I remember putting Ryan Daniel on a pair, and I'm pretty sure we have footage of it. And I think you were filming, 
and he was like, I'm just going to play around on the sides of the trail. And, like, that's, it was, looked yeah. perfect for what he was doing. Um, I think it's fair to say that it has some limitations, too. I would yeah. say high speeds are one. Um, the, one of the days that we skied it was frigid with, like, really uphill wind and, like, going too fast wasn't a concern right. on that day. But I have been on them and tried to kind of push them to their limits. I think I was going from Serpo to Mira's core and was kind of like, can this do what the Serpo could? And there was a point where just with the amount of rocker that it has and the short radius, it got a little, it doesn't love just going super fast. Yeah. So that's a limitation, but that's not the focus of this ski. Black Crows has plenty of other skis that you can take and like rip. Right. Serpo, Justice, Corvus. Corvus. There's yeah. tons of skis from them that are lack no stability whatsoever and have pretty big turn radii. This is just designed for fun. Yep. And it's just so much fun. Uh, you get a pretty good amount of float out of it, too. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't have it on, like, a big, deep powder day, but enough soft snow to kind of play around with it. And for 87 underfoot, it feels a lot wider than that yeah. when you're in softer snow. Um, I was reminded of the footage of Mike Thomas skiing it. He's mm -hmm. a bigger guy like yourself. Yep. Um, and that kind of, that, that was where another limitation came up, or at least I perceived it to be a limitation in the sense that he being a heavier skier had to specifically stay centered on it. Um, and I think it, it, that's worth uh, taking with a grain of salt because I do believe he was on the 178 link. Which and there is, that, is, a, yeah. is a 184 yep. too. But I think that's maybe another, it's another at least something to bring up. Because if you're a bigger skier, especially if you're a bigger skier who likes to ski fast, it might not be the best choice. Mm -hmm. But, boy, they're just so fun. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's really cool. I'm really looking forward to skiing them more. Yep. Um, something that I'd like to do is get a pair that belongs to me that I can mount more centered. Uh, you know, like we said, this is already pretty darn centered, but I would love to ski rails yeah. on these skis. I would love to see what they can do in the park. I think they would be just really, really fun um, carving off lips, you know, or like switch carving, right. switch carve takeoffs. There's a lot of things that I can imagine doing on these skis that would be easier than skis with longer turn radii. Right, you'd be able to generate, you know, way different angles on yeah, this exactly. ski in the park than exactly. you could, really anything else out there. Yeah, and like kind of new wave park skiers are are, are kind of combining more of that into right. their skiing. You see a lot more of, of carving and, and more angulation yep. and, and kind of new school freestyle skiers these days than you did even just like five years ago. So I think having a ski like this is, is really yeah. cool. Yeah, I would love to get on the 184 and see what that longer length uh, felt like. I mean, it still carries that short turn radius into it. Yeah, 13 it, so. carries through all the lengths. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see that, um, you know, just to bring the, the blade back into the fold. And there are, I'm sure there are other skis out there like this with, you know, that wider shovel and tail with the narrower waist, you know, that my take on the, on the blade was that it was more like a, a fat slalom ski. Yes. And I, didn't quite get the impression that this followed that same no. uh, mold. This definitely has more of that freestyle flair, whereas the blade is more of a, more of a directional ski, even though it does have, you know, a, a twin tip in you know a, a shape sense, maybe not a freestyle sense, um, but definitely had the same feeling, just that this had a lot more playfulness to it, whereas the blade seemed to be more of an on trail carving ski. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's kind of interesting because you've spent a lot more time on the blade than yep. me, and I've spent a lot more time on this than <laughs> you. Um, but yeah, I would agree. And I think of that ski in the same light as this ski in the sense that they're both, they're two skis and there are really aren't many others yeah. that are trying to combine frontside carving performance with freestyle performance. Right. They both do it. I think it's fair to say that they're both in that little mini subcategory, this new new category. But yeah, I think it's fair to say that this leans more towards the freestyle side of things where the blade leans more towards the frontside yeah. carving side of things. Yeah. Um, 
both skis, you can like slash turns and do all sorts of fun stuff. It's easier to do those on these, but you lose a little bit of, of like, I guess stability at speed. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Um, and you know, they have more, there's more metal in the blade. So, right. uh, but it's also wider. So what it gains with the metal, it loses with the width, width. in terms yeah. of torsional stiffness. Yeah. 87 but, to 95. Right. In the blade. So yeah. pretty, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty interesting comparison. Um, definitely different skis, but it, yeah, it's really, really interesting just like looking at them side to side. Yeah. Um, so that's the mirror's core. Bob, anything you want to end with? No, just, you know, again, love seeing this stuff out of, you know, these smaller companies kind of making stuff that no one else makes. And, uh, you know, obviously when you get on them, you, you can, you can see why. And, uh, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to ask a customer, I would say, to be like, here, try this totally unproven and new right, thing and right. just have fun. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's a safe bet with skis like this that they are, they just have a lot of positives to them. You know? Yeah. And like you said, there are limitations, but there's limitations to every ski. Right. So it's not like this is a unique ski and that it's the only one that can't do hold, something. That hold an edge at 50 miles an hour. So, right. Um, but just, you know, really good job by them for, for making something fun and interesting and new. Yeah. I mean, really, really would be a cool ski, you know, if you're the type of skier that, like, has a big quiver of skis. Yeah. I think adding something like this is like a no-brainer because you don't have it. Yeah. Like no one, no one has this already because right. <laughs> it doesn't exist in any other form other than this one. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, really cool ski. Let us know if you have any questions about it. As usual, it's super unique. So I feel like we could keep talking about it. We haven't even talked about the tip shape. Right. I mean, it's just. It's, weird looking it's weird. <laughs> I think we can just leave it at that. Uh, so, yeah, let us know if you have any questions, and we'll see you guys out there on the slopes. Bye. Hey. Good old nearest core.